Okay, welcome back to the Chaos Corner. <clears throat> um, I'm probably not going to do a whole bunch of talking in this video because I did just have surgery and when they put you to sleep they put a breathing tube down your throat so it aggravates your throat um, <clears throat> and kind of makes things a little scratchy, makes it kind of hard to talk. This is almost two weeks past that point so um, hopefully I'll be okay as far as talking goes and I won't have to cut out on it. Um, I realized I didn't get all the colors that I wanted. Um, for the for the church. Um, okay, I think I'll hold off on that. Okay. I was thinking about getting some green for the bushes, but I'm going to do something different for the bushes. Um, and I'm not sure if I want to paint them green or paint them more like a brown. Actually, I think brown is what I want to do with them because even if the um, what I plan on doing shows through a little bit you know bushes have brown branches so it'll just look fine um, okay so for this this is the church we will be doing the church today um, church is probably going to be in a couple of separate videos. One will be just the painting. One's going to be how I'm going to do the windows, the treatment that I'm doing for the windows. And then the other one will be for what's going to be growing up through the hole there in the roof. Okay. So today is just going to be painting the church. Um, I am going to need, I, first of course, my, my initial thought was, you know, white church, maybe a green roof, um, but when I looked up online, most of the white churches had like a, a slate pavement type looking color of a roof, so I'm just going to go with the pavement color from Apple Barrel for the roof, um, and of course I was like, oh, I'm going to paint it white, and then I'm going to dingy it up, and then I'm like, mm, no, because white, white yellows over the years, so to kind of help age the um, the uh, outside of the church I'm gonna do ivory and um, I'm gonna do brown on the bushes and then um, the church is gonna have a red door every time I think of a white church I think of a red door and I was like is that a real thing so I went and I looked it up and yes it is a real thing um, Churches often paint their doors red to indicate that they are a sanctuary. Um, it also is supposed to be indicative of the blood, blood of Christ. Um, so I'm glad I did that little tiny bit of research just to make sure that was real. I, I you know, um, I didn't want to do something that would like offend people about the church, even though it's going to be in a haunted village. Um, so. I'm just going to start with the cream, and I didn't realize this cream hadn't been opened yet. I don't think I have an opened cream. And this is the first video that I am doing with a brand new web camera. Um, got it from Walmart for. $35 I think so let me know what you think about the picture quality the sound quality I've turned off the fan um, we have air conditioning back Woo -hoo! Um, so let me know what you think about the um, quality of the video quality of the sound um, yeah just you know give me some feedback down there guys I thrive for feedback so, let me know. Um, as far as the paint job, it's going to be pretty straightforward. 
there's really not going to be a whole lot of different techniques used on this I don't think like as far as um, actual painting goes I don't plan on doing any dry brushing except for maybe on the roof to help the roof look a little bit more aged um, the thing I'm gonna do a little differently for the um, wash that I do is I'm gonna do a brown wash and then put some green wash um, in slightly different places and um, I'm not gonna use that green from the mansion where I kind of patina the roof on the mansion um, I'm, I'm going to be using a darker green um, I think it's like a hunter green yeah it's this color here I gotta figure out this camera angle um, so as you see I'm, I'm just putting on a main layer of color I'm not worrying about being too perfect. Right now I'm just getting the cream on because it's so it's a it's a thin brand of paint. So I'm going to go back and do another another layer and so much for not doing a whole lot of talking. I, th I think I haven't stopped talking since I turned on the camera. Um, but what I am going to do now is I'm going to pause this and I'm going to finish painting out the cream. Okay. Uh, I think I'm going to do the roof and the door kind of on the same section here because um, it's really not going to take long to do either one of those. Get my favorite little brush here. This brush, see how nasty <laughs> frayed out it is? I don't care how many times I clean it, it still kind of stays that way, but man do I love it. I love, like, even though it sprays out like that is still usually paints on really well for me mmm all right this red's not this red was apple barrel crimson and it's just kind of going on like water so let's find a different red do, do, do. Um. Plaid Bright Red. Let's try that brand. Oh, this one sounds kind of watery. And then there's the Nicole's. Let's see what the Pride. <laughs> Plaid crimson red. And it comes out kind of watery too. Let's see. Oh, I like the Nicole's. Let's try this again, shall we? Maybe what I'm gonna do is take the Nicole's red and the Well, that would be interesting. This is, even though it says it's the plaid company, uh, plaid uh, is, is Apple Barrel. Never mind. But it's a slightly different shade. But, okay, so I'm just gonna stay here. Let's see what the Nicole's Red does. I'm not dry brushing, I'm just trying to get the glop off the. Probably 
probably going to have to go back and repaint around the door. That's not a big deal. Well, regardless, this one is going on thicker, but because we have a black undercoat, it's going to take a couple coats to build up this red. And that's okay. Just remember you are ah, not in a race. And sometimes if you keep going over the wet color, you end up taking color off like I did just there. I don't know. Like I'm trying to put color on in that area and I'm just kind of taking it right back off. So when that starts to happen, don't fret just stop and go paint something else like the roof I wonder why apple barrel red comes out so runny it's the one that I have the most trouble with all right and I'm just using that pavement color I'm painting on to the roof and then I will like I said the roof is probably going to be the only thing that I dry brush and that's to help age it a little bit If you like these videos make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification button uh, because when you do that combination when I upload a new video you will get a notification that a video has been uploaded um, please be sure to like these videos give it a thumbs up give it a thumbs down if you really don't like it that's okay it all helps in um, the analytics so that I can know what to offer as content I'm not out to make a million bucks I'm not even out to make money on YouTube this is here as a means to help learn about crafting of all sorts um, and also how to you know in this particular series is crafting with ceramics and just kind of you know getting your feet wet and instead of worrying about if you have the, the right paint brushes or the right paints just get started and enjoy it then as you go like you know I'm like okay apple barrel red paint sucks I won't use that anymore I'll go and spend just a little bit more on a better brand for the red and as as I find brands that I like those will be the brands that I start to use and you know like I said I like the Mako softies line that's their acrylic line um, and for those of you who don't know, that's the line that Clay Magic in Michigan, 
That's the line they use to do all their painting. They use the Mako. They might use some some others here and there, but their main um, their their main choice of paint is the Mako softies, and I do like them, so I have a small selection. Am I using them in this up this series? No, probably not. Um, because again, this is more to show you that you can do it with what you have available to you, close to you. So that you don't have to sit there and order things online and wait for it to come. If you're a purist, by all means, order those. It's more about there's no wrong way to art. Like color does not want to go right here in this area where I'm trying to get it. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Oh yeah. I've got a little bit more roof back here. Um, I'm going to show you this window real quick. Oops. The window, I accidentally painted cream in the window area. So I took a piece of paper towel and I wiped it out. And I, I was like, well, you know, I'm going to have to go back over it with some blue. But you know what? I might not because I kind of like how it looks. So I might just leave it that way. Because it kind of looks like somebody wiped dirt off. of the window to look inside from the back. Okay. And here along the edge I'm just kind of taking my brush and making sure I got this edge line done. There we go. Alright, back to the red door. Much better. I think this poor little brush, I'm going to try to do my brush revival technique where I put it in the, um, fabric softener for 24 hours and then wash it out and see if that helps the brush. If it doesn't help the brush, then this poor little brush will probably be relegated to other applications, like applying glue in certain areas and things of that nature. Okay, that is looking great. I'll just have a slightly damp paper towel. I'm going to try to wipe away some of the red that got on to the cream because that'll make it a little easier to cover up when I go back to paint over that area with the cream. Now something I'm going to do with the pavement color is the windows have these little tiny window ledges. So I'm just going to kind of give them a little paint. Help them stand out. Just 
a little bit more. Now real quick, I'm going to use a toothpick to do this round window. I don't know why, but me and the really small brushes, we tend to argue a lot. So when I do my detail, I find using a toothpick usually helps me out far more than using a super fine paintbrush. Again, I don't know why. But this way, you can see how to do some detail work without a really fine tip paintbrush. And sometimes when you're doing a toothpick, I almost said toothbrush, um, when you're doing a toothpick, sometimes it's better to start back in the paint where you left off and kind of drag it out than to start up here where there's no paint because sometimes that causes a little bit of a blending problem.
think I'm going to do one more coat of red. When I go to do the wash on this, I'm going to try really hard not to get any wash on the red door. I kind of want it to look mm, untouched by the ages. maybe a miracle no, no. but I want it to look untouched by the ages so I'm going to try really hard to not get any of the wash on the red door so when I do the wash the wash is going to be done with a paintbrush instead of just being poured on at least in the front here. Okay, I'm just kind of touching up around the door. Trying to find a different brown that doesn't sound so watery. Nicole's to the rescue. And I just got out the brown so that I can get these bushes kind of painted out. Because if I do um, the treatment that I'm thinking about, I'm not really going to need to worry about if they're painted or not. But the treatment might not cover fully. So if a little bit of brown shows through, that'll be okay because it'll give the um, illusion of branch. finish my sentence there um, yeah I'm just And the reason why I'm going for brown instead of green is because I'm not sure if 
the treatment that I'm going to do is going to be green um, because this is going to be a haunted village. Not necessarily, that doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be Halloween per se, but when I think of a haunted village, I think that you know you, you end up going to a haunted village or looking for one or happening upon one in the fall. Um, the fall, the bushes, unless they're evergreen bushes, wouldn't be green. They would be yellows and oranges and reds, especially if they're burning bushes, they would be reds, uh, which would be kind of cool. Now the two trees here at the front, those I might do green because they are the evergreen trees, but the um, treatment that I'm going to do to them, I might be able to disguise the fact that they're trees and just make them more burning bushes. Um, kind of have to think about that one for a minute. And of course I've messed up up here and got cream in places. And I'm going to paint this stoop in the pavement as well. <sighs> now it's time to dry, dry brush the uh, roof. And I'm wondering, I'm going to take some of this cream into the pavement, smush it about. Not enough of a difference. I have a dog sneezing behind me. Sorry guys. Being a little bit heavier on the dry brushing because I want it to look a little... I want it to be a stark contrast to how the roof is wore out and the uh, walls are yellowed and browned. Um, and then the, the red door is still absolutely perfect. So there's a closer look at the heavy dry brushing on the one side. brushing on that back roof there. <laughs> I think I'm too impatient of a painter to really enjoy dry brushing per se. Like I get the concept of it, but 
I want to do it in a coat or two instead of three or five. Okay, dry brushed roof. Now, instead of pouring on the wash, I'm going to paint it on. because again I don't I, I want to try to keep the door as pristine as possible but I think what I'll do is um, pour it on the roof so that we get some natural staining down the walls at least on the sides. <laughs> Pay attention to what I'm doing so I don't knock it over. <laughs> you guys can see that I'm just slapping this on. only lifting it up so that I can see what I'm doing and that hopefully you can see it too. Okay. Oh, that's almost off screen. Mm. I don't want to do it like right here because that's where the, the table table folds out right here so there's always this little tiny I'm trying to find the best place that's not on that fold okay Oh, I just got some on the door. Okay, that's all right. If it shows up on the door, I will just paint over it. All right, I think I'm going to let this kind of percolate and dry. Um, come back I'll do some maybe uh, maybe some green wash well definitely some green wash I think but maybe some of the black wash too just to give it a little bit more dirty look all right be back in a little bit guys gotta let this dry
Okay, so I have the church. The reddish brown just didn't do enough um, darkening. And the good thing is, is where it went on the door, you can't really tell, so cool. So I'm going to go back with some black wash. I had to remake the black wash, so I'm going to do a quick little test, make sure it's dark enough, it looks good. Okay. And I'm going to... I know if I get the black wash on the door, it will definitely show through. So what I did there is I just kind of moved the building around so that I could control where the droplets went. And I think I'm going to leave it like that. up in here so it looks like something really took control and kept the doorway more clear. literally just dabbing in and coming back out and dabbing dabbing on just to give it some more credibility. <laughs> Not credibility, credibility. Okay. Now I'm going to do some green. I'm going to try it out. Back here first. So I kind of want it And areas where maybe moss would build up. Might want to wait and come back and do this when the black is dry. I think I'll do that. All right, gonna take a break. Gonna be back once this portion is dry, and we're gonna do a little bit of the green wash. Um, I think I'm going to like it. So we'll see. Alright, be back in a minute. Okay. Back to try the green green wash in some places.
think this is working out pretty decent. I think I'm going to do a little bit of dry brushing of green up on the roof. I'm going to get the same green that I used to make the wash with. Uh -oh. And I think from now on I'm going to pour the wash in a bucket because this table slants and it slants forward. So I end up having the wash run all over the place. And I'm sorry, but the dogs are in the room and they are deciding to play. So that's the viciousness you're hearing in the background is a little 12 pound papillon thinking she can tell a 50 pound Doberman or an 85 pound Doberman that she's the boss. Hush. Okay, so I'm gonna try to get some dry brushing green up on here. I want the roof to look a little bit more dilapidated, like the reason why it fell in was because it became dilapidated. So I want some more green. Up here on the roof. more green on the roof I think I'm happier with that and I think I'm gonna do some dry brushing of green on the corners Sorry, I went off.
in the next episodes of the church, you'll kind of see why I want it to be a little bit more greeny, mossy oh. look with the church. And I want to do a little bit of that greeny, mossy look with, with paint. Oops, that got a little bit thick. There's the church preliminarily done. Don't ask me to say that again. Let's see, I want to see what this looks like. I think that's green enough. That ends the church for now. Like I said, there's going to be some other parts to it that are going to be coming up after this episode. Um, I'm done with the main pieces of the village, so now it's the extra pieces and doing some of the extra cool little tips and tricks along the way kind of thing. So I think the church... Um, I'm not sure if I want to go ahead and do the extra steps right away and kind of get it finished or go ahead and paint the other two houses and the jack-o'-lantern um, and then go from you know and then go back and, and do the church pieces um, I gotta kind of toss that around um, to figure out which how, how I want to do it um, so with that being said, remember, if you like these videos, hit the subscribe button, hit that bell notification so that you get notified anytime I upload a new video. Um, make sure you give me a thumbs up, thumbs down, give me a comment. I strive, I, I feed, I, I thrive, I, I need feedback. Give me feedback, whether it's good, bad, indifferent, um, just let me know what you're thinking. Um, let me know at the in, in the comments of this video if you want me to do the rest of the, you know, get the church done. Um, do those extra little added tidbits. Um, or if you want me to go on to the houses and the jack-o'-lantern. Um, let me know down in, in the comments below. And with that, one, with that, I will say catch you guys on the next one. 